In Aleppo, Syria, two insurgents are swiftly taken out by a group of Navy SEALs who emerge from the waters. The SEALs, including John Kelly, meet up with CIA agent Ritter to get the details of their next mission. Ritter wants them to rescue a CIA operative who is being held in a nearby building. Ritter nonchalantly tells the team he does not know how many insurgents they're going up against, which causes him and John to butt heads over his lack of info. That night, the team approached the target building, silently taking out a lookout before blowing their way into the building. They swiftly head upstairs where they come under gunfire, but easily take out the men. The team rush the room and kill all the men before they grab the hostage. John then finds out that the men they killed are ex-Russian military, and not Syrians, but Ritter blows this off. As they are about to leave, they are attacked by an RPG, blowing the hallway to bits. John recovers, but few of the men are killed. His commander Greer has fallen a floor below, but Ritter refuses to help save her and leaves. John and two marines stay behind as Greer comes under attack. John jumps into the hole and begins taking on the men with Greer, when they realize that they are in a Russian arms depot, and that Ritter lied to them. The two make their way towards the exit, and John skillfully ambushes two waiting men and kills them both easily. They manage to meet up with Ritter as he is boarding the chopper, demanding answers from him, but Ritter just smiles at him. John grabs Ritter angrily, but Greer orders him to stand down. Ritter then calls in an airstrike which destroys the arms depot. Three months later, John and his wife Pam are at John's parents' home with friends, celebrating her sixth month of pregnancy. We hear how John has been offered a job as private security after leaving the Marines which he is looking forward to. In North Carolina, we see John's former Marine partner Rowdy at home with his wife and kids. He heads outside to throw out the trash when a van suddenly runs him over killing him. In Atlanta, former Marine Keith is stuck in heavy traffic behind a van. Suddenly men jump out and open fire killing him on the spot. John and Pam return home after the party and are getting settled in for bed. He talks to his soon-to-be-born baby girl before trying to get some cheeks from Pam, but she is too tired and wants to sleep. He heads downstairs to listen to music and relax, unaware a team of men are outside cutting his power. Fortunately, the power to his laptop dies, leading him to realize that the power is out. He then hears the floorboard squeaking and grabs his gun and a flashlight. Meanwhile, the team has made their way up the stairs and into Pam's room and fire shots at the bed. One of the men then kills the shooter. John, who reaches the top of the stairs, encounters one man and shoots him dead. He kills another attacker, but has a shootout with the last which causes him to get shot in the process. The two men lay there in pain. The attacker tries to shoot John but is out of bullets, so he drags himself to his feet and staggers out the door. John then gathers his strength and crawls to the bedroom, calling for Pam. He gets to the bed, but Pam is dead and he clutches at the sheets tearfully before passing out. John is rushed to the hospital with his life hanging in the balance. The CIA and the Marines hold a briefing about the attacks on the Special Forces Unit, where Ritter implies that the SEALs may have got themselves into some bad business and will be investigating all leads. Greer angrily confronts him after the meeting, defending the honor of her men. She demands he explain what is really going on, but Ritter Coldy tells her they are looking into it. John is in a comatose state, dreaming about Pam, and has a seizure. After a few days, John wakes up to see Greer standing beside him. He asks about his baby, but learns that both his girls did not make it. John silently cries, before wanting to know who was behind the attack, noting that they were pros, but Greer has no idea. He tells her about the dead man he found in the bedroom, and about the one that got away. He demands just a name, but Greer has no information and could not give him even if she did. Later, Greer is in her office when she is visited by Secretary of Defense Thomas Clay, who notes that Greer's father speaks highly of her judgment. Due to this, Clay wants to know if they can trust John as he has a plan. John soon begins his rehabilitation. Greer is summoned to meet with Secretary Clay and Ritter, who is not pleased having Greer in his briefing, but Clay ignores him. Ritter shows them a picture of the son of the head of the FSB, who was killed when they assaulted the Russian arms depot, and who he thinks was the cause of the revenge attacks on the Marines. Greer sees three photos and asks Ritter about the fourth attacker, but Ritter tells her it does not matter, and surprisingly reveals that the CIA has marked the case as closed, and the scores even. Greer is pissed hearing this, 
and Clay reveals that his hands are tied if the CIA has closed the case. Greer then meets up with John, where she tells him to come have a drink. She now understands how John feels towards Ritter and tells him about the CIA's decision. Greer then shows John the images of the attackers which she got from Clay, telling him that the fourth is a ghost. All their passports were issued by Andre Vasiliev, an ex-FSB agent who Greer notes is untouchable. A few nights later, John heads over to his home, which is still a crime scene. He heads into his room where he breaks down in anger and tears, mourning the loss of his family. He heads to the basement where he removes a stash of weapons and money from the heater. Upstairs, he readies his gun before pouring alcohol all over himself. John tracks down Andre to the consulate, staggering over to his guards acting drunk. He sees Andre leave in a vehicle as he is arguing with the guards. Soon he is in his truck behind the convoy. He calls 911 reporting that someone in Andre's convoy flashed a gun at him. The cops soon pull over the cars leaving Andre alone on the road. Suddenly, John drives straight into their car pinning it. John starts to pour gasoline all over the car as Andre struggles to get free and lights it on fire. John then gets in the blazing car shooting the driver before holding a gun to Andre. He demands to know the name of the fourth attacker, shooting Andre in the leg when he hesitates. Andre then tells John that he is the problem, as he is supposed to be dead. John shoots Andre in the chest puncturing his lung, forcing him to give up the name Victor Rykoff. John then shoots Andre dead before surrendering to the cops who have gathered on the scene. Soon, news is leaked about the Russians attacking the Marines, but the CIA and government are still trying to cover it up. Ritter tells Clay that they suspect that Greer leaked the info to John. Ritter is worried about sending the wrong message to the Russians, but Clay tells him that John shook a tree they could not, and they should wait to see what falls out. John is now in prison facing a life sentence. Greer comes to visit him where he does not regret his actions, as he feels betrayed by his own government, and the loss of his family is something he will never forgive. He then reveals that he found out some new information, but if Clay wants to hear, then he has to get him out of prison. John is brought back to his cell when he hears some men outside his door talking Russian. A few minutes later, a guard comes to him ordering him to turn and face the wall as they are going on a trip. John refuses to move, and the guard leaves angrily. John then grabs a towel and begins wrapping his fist. He takes off his shirt and begins to flood the cell, preparing himself, knowing that a war is coming. Soon armed guards rush the room and John starts going crazy, beating down the men. He then grabs one by the neck, ordering the others to close his door or he kills him. The men comply, but more guards soon turn up at the door. At that moment, U.S. Marshals stop the guards then pass a cell phone to John. On the line is Greer who tells him to follow the marshals who will bring him to freedom. John is taken to a black site where Clay, Ritter, and the CIA boss Sarah are present. They want to know what John has found out, and he tells them the name Victor Rykoff. Sarah is surprised that he knows that name, but insists that Victor is dead. Ritter tries to cover it up, until he is forced to reveal that Victor is the leader of the team of men. John easily picks him out among some pictures, worrying Sarah and Ritter. Ritter insists that if Victor is alive, they should find him and bring him in, and John demands to be on the team. Clay initially refuses, and surprisingly Greer backs him up, stating that John is not fit, but Clay changes his mind, telling John that after the mission he returns to prison. John then meets up with the rest of the team at a hangar, where they will be flying in a commercial plane and jumping out over Russia. Ritter then leaves the team to take his own ride, telling them he will join them over there. During the flight, John playfully confronts Greer about her statements, but she was just looking out for him. John thinks that if he had left the Marines earlier and not been on that mission, maybe his family would still be alive, and he blames himself. He plans to get his revenge, ignoring Greer when she reminds him that this is an extraction mission. The team get to the drop spot and are preparing to jump when a Russian fighter jet joins them. The pilots pull up alongside, ordering the pilot to divert. The pilot refuses, so the Russians hit the plane's engines with a missile, and the plane lands in the middle of the sea. Greer orders them to exit the plane, but John refuses to leave the gear behind as they cannot complete the mission without it. The plane begins to sink, forcing John to dive with the plane. He catches air when he can, before getting to one bag and attaching a float. He is now running out of air, but manages to attach one last bag, and use it to bring him to the surface. He barely makes it, 
and his team help him into the inflatable boat he saved, and they speed off to complete the mission. They arrive in a town and get to their safe house. John suspects that the attack was deliberate, and that Ritter may have something to do with it, and plans to get answers. Ritter and his team are watching the news about the plane, when John and the team burst in and hold them at gunpoint. Ritter tries to give excuses, but John grabs him around his neck. Ritter swears that he is just trying to get to Victor, and did not sell the Marines out. John eventually releases him, and Ritter leaves to go change his pants. Soon, the Marines along with Ritter and his men make their way in a van, and arrive at a building just across from where Victor is hiding out. John looks through his sights to see Victor, and Greer sees him and gets worried, but John reassures her that he is just looking. Later, the team infiltrates the building with John on point. They make their way up the stairs, and John tells them to wait while he checks ahead, but he suddenly locks them on the other side of a gate before moving on by himself. He enters the apartment where all the Russians are dead, and Victor calls out to John by name. John tells him he will pay for Pam, when Victor reveals that he is actually CIA. John comes face to face with Victor who has a bomb strapped to his chest, indicating that they are both pawns in a larger game. John wants him to keep talking to learn more, but Victor tells him he is a patriot before blowing himself to pieces. The rest of the team catch up to John who tells Greer that Victor was waiting for them. Suddenly they come under attack from a sniper with one of the men hit. They are unable to pinpoint the sniper location, so John grabs a piece of broken glass and manages to point him out. John lays down cover fire and they try to get to their injured partner, but a second sniper reveals himself. They barely manage to avoid the gunfire and take cover. Outside, two cops pull up, but the snipers shoot them dead. John figures they are going to be blamed for their deaths. He realizes that someone wanted the U.S. to find dead Russians on their soil, and now, if they die here, the Russians will find U.S. soldiers dead on their soil, which would start a war. While the rest of the team lay down cover fire, John blows a hole through the wall to the next apartment. Greer goes to ambush the sniper while John distracts him. Greer bursts in but she is out of bullets and gets into a fight with the man. Greer does her best to fight off the stronger man and barely manages to throw him off her and stab him killing him. The team then make their way to the lobby but are unable to leave as the building is now surrounded by cops. John then comes up with a plan to be a distraction while the others escape. Greer refuses, but John reminds her that he is a known felon and the only one who can actually be found dead here without starting a war. Greer accepts this, and John immediately sets off to the roof. He then launches his attack, throwing grenades and letting off shots, giving the guys time to escape. The cops corner John on the roof, but he kills a few and push the others back. He is down to his sidearm and gets shot in the shoulder, but dives through the roof to escape. John gets into a fight with a soldier and manages to kill the man, before grabbing a rifle and blasting his way down the stairs, sending soldiers running for cover. In his bag is a bomb and he manages to arm it before the men can get to him and set off a massive explosion. In the chaos and smoke, John, wearing a Russian soldier uniform, manages to steal an ambulance. He weakly drives back to the hideout, where Greer sees him and helps him inside. The team soon gets extracted from the country. On the boat, John notes that Victor was just another pawn, and they will never get to the people behind this. He knows he will be thrown back in prison, but surprisingly, Ritter offers him money and a chance for freedom, as he knows they stand a better chance of uncovering the conspiracy with John as a ghost. Later, we see Clay having dinner, watching news about the tensions between Russia and America. He heads to the bathroom without his men when John meets him there. John tells Clay about the op gone bad and the conspiracy, but when Clay accidentally reveals that he knows more details than what was told to him, John confirms his suspicions. John grabs Clay around the neck and chokes him out. Clay wakes up in John's van with his hands bound. John demands to know why he would do this, but Clay refuses to speak. John reveals that he is taking Clay to his family and will watch him kill them if he does not talk. Clay finally reveals that he did all this to make America great again, as they are at their most powerful when at war. John then buckles up his seatbelt and drives straight over a bridge into a river. He orders Clay to call Pam's name, but even when Clay does, John coldly watches him drown. John sits there underwater, imagining meeting with Pam in the afterlife. We then see a funeral being held for both Pam and John. Greer collects the flag on behalf of the family and returns to her van, where John is there waiting for her. It is revealed that John had taped the conversation with Clay, 
which Ritter used to blackmail the government into getting John a new identity. John then says goodbye to Greer at a train station, planning to start a new life. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.